Noah Putney, El Elias Negron, and Frank Lemon. Joining me in the broadcast booth, Felician former pitcher Jerry Vasto. Jerry, thanks for joining me. No problem. <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So you had three stints uh, with three different teams, uh, the Rockies, the Cubs, and the Royals. But which one did you enjoy the most? Uh, that's, that's a tough question. Um, you know, obviously I spent most of my time with the Rockies. If I pop up here, I'm going to be in trouble. Pop up towards the right side. Makes the play, Downey. And even though he's got that leg, leg injury, he's been performing pretty well defensively over the past week and a half. So there's one away from Putney. And now we'll face Elias Negron. And he is one of two today. Yeah, so, uh, you know, s spent most of my career with the Rockies, came up with them. Um, you know, got to live the minor league life with them for the most part. Um, and then the Royals, I'm a little biased. Obviously, I loved it with them, but um, most of my time with them was in the big leagues, so I didn't have to, you know, go through any of the minor league stuff. You and Langan both. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the Cubs are a great organization, too. They're doing a lot of great things for player development. Um, you know, it's. I didn't get a chance to actually pitch in, in their organization, but I was at spring training this year with them, um, rehab, Tommy John with them. Um, so if I had to say one one organization, I got to say the Rockies, they, they kind of gave me my chance and mm -hmm. I ran with it. So I'm, I'm definitely grateful for that. And how is the transition? Because, you know, I've never been to Colorado, but especially when you're from New Jersey, not too far away from here, how much does it affect you when you're playing in Colorado in a baseball atmosphere, the way you have to change your the way you breathe and the way you yeah. live uh, altitude's a real thing for sure um, I kind of got my first taste of it in AAA in Albuquerque um, we got pretty much the same altitude as Denver there and uh, I remember my first outing there and covering first base on a PFP and being out of breath and mm -hmm. that's when I realized you know um, you know altitude's a real thing the ball's a little bit slicker obviously it carries a little bit further especially if you're giving up barrels um, so you got to adjust a little bit to the altitude but you also got to stay within yourself and, and be the same pitcher that you are before that because uh, you do play in other places that are lower in altitude. Um, obviously, ground balls are your friend, but um, you know what? As long as you're getting outs, you, you're going to get a chance. And rumor is, uh, just hearing about this last night, um, MLB All-Star Game may be held in Coors Field this year in 2021. Yeah. How does that sound? I, I saw that. Coors is a beautiful field. Pop up towards Floridis for out number two. Top of the lineup coming up for Frank Lemon. Yeah, Coors is a, a, a beautiful stadium. They got great fans there. Um, you know, probably my favorite stadium that I played at was, was Coors Field. It's just everything about it's just beautiful. Ball does carry out there. Now, my brother, like, he says that the Rockies, and he's probably watching this right now, when the Rockies play and they go elsewhere, does it really diminish their chances of hitting the ball hard? Because when Arenado, if he left Colorado like he's playing for St. Louis, he does have a home run, all right. But do you think that the players, when they leave Colorado, their chances of going elsewhere somewhat diminish? Uh, you know what, I think – Because the ball does carry a lot further. Yeah, it's definitely different. But uh, you know, I think LeMay, he was a guy who kind of goes against that. You know, you saw him win a batting title in Colorado, then go over to True. New York and, you know, pretty much be the same exact player. Um, Arenado's a phenomenal player. I don't think you're going to see any uh, any downfalls in his production moving over to St. Louis with the thicker air. Um, he's a guy who just he finds barrels when he swings. He's one of the best hitters in the game. And, um, I think it's going to be a good move for him going there. And they got a really good squad over in St. Louis. Um, so they're going to be fun to watch this year. So do you remember your first strikeout when you are with the Rockies? I do. Who was, was against, it on? Uh, against John Jay. John Jay. Yep. Who was on the Cubs, and I believe he was on the Royals, too. I think he did have a little bit of time with the Royals. Yeah. yeah. And that was at Wrigley or that was at Coors? No, that was at Coors. Yeah. Um, he was on the Diamondbacks at the time. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, that was probably the only good moment for my debut. It didn't go as planned, but uh, I was happy I got that strikeout in there. Was it backwards, Okay. Yes, it was looking. Oh, that's, Outside corner. that's the nicest one you can get. Yeah. I can imagine, especially when you're having your debut in Colorado, the air is going to be twice as hot, especially when you're playing June, early June. How how was the debut as far as 
the atmosphere when you were playing even before COVID-19? I was crazy. It was a sellout game. It was a Sunday uh, day game. Um, you know, it was it was definitely a whirlwind of you know 12 hours or so. I found out at at midnight the night before that I was getting called up. I was in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, hopped on a flight early that morning. Went straight from the airport over to the stadium, and uh, you know just played catch and then got changed and I was ready to go. And Lemon works a walk on Gutierrez and. What do you think of Michael Gutierrez? I mean, he is ranking himself closer and closer to the strikeout list, uh, getting close to John Holland. Uh, he's got six strikeouts today. And what do you think of his performance so far, his career being a Golden Falcon at the moment? Yeah, I mean, he's just continuously put up really good numbers, even from his freshman year, which is something you don't really see too much. Um, but he kind of came in here right away and, and had an impact. Um, and since then, he's just been rolling. Um, you know, he's battling a little bit today, but he's able to limit some damage and, and keep them from getting a big inning, even though there's been some base runners on and some unlucky plays. But, uh, you know, the stuff's there for sure. You know, he's got a plus fastball, plus breaking ball. Looks like the changeup and the two-seam are coming along too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely excited to, to watch him a little bit more this year and see what happens. I think his curveball is one of the most filthiest curveballs I've seen. Uh, and, and just the way he throws off-speed pitches is – is mesmerizing and keeps batters off balance, but that's the designated goal for a pitcher. And you were talking to one of the pitchers pri uh, prior to the game, and I heard this, and I want to know the difference because I was a lefty too. I, I still am a lefty, but I don't pitch anymore. Uh, the difference between throwing fast and throwing hard. Now, how do you summarize that? Yeah, so uh, you know, there's a stolen base from Lemon. You got him. And he actually... Oh, they call batter interference on Barbetti. And he's looking for an explanation from DeJesus and no argument from Whitfield and probably until now. But scoreless in the top of the six, heading to the bottom of the six. Vesto will still be with us. 7-2 Felician. You're watching Felician Baseball on the CACC Network. Right, we're in the bottom of the six, seven, two, Felician, and Joe Curcio up at the dish. And he's looking to avenge after a brutal first three ABs, all strikeouts, and he's got 20 on the year leading the team. Ditz still in to pitch, so it'll be Ditz versus Curcio, lefty on lefty. And uh, over the break, we were talking about your relationship with Coach Langan, and how did that really develop uh, when you came to Felician? Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, Chris was the only coach to give me a scholarship offer. Um, you know, he was a, a guy who grew up right up the highway from me. Good check swing there. Right towards short. Trying to slide into first base, Curcio, 0 for 4. Good throw from Lemon at short, excuse me, from Negron from short. And there's one away in the top, in the bottom of the sixth. Curcio grabbing his hip a little bit there, but, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, um, you know, he, uh. Came and saw me at one of my travel games, offered me a scholarship shortly after. And, uh, you know, I didn't wait too long for, for other schools to come along. I wanted to commit, um, you know, during the fall of my senior year. Um, I didn't want to go through all the application stuff. And after my visit to Felician, I uh, committed, signed my letter. And um, since then, you know, Chris and I have a really good relationship. Um, obviously, it got better once I got a little bit better on the mound for him. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was going through my pro career, we always kept in touch. I came up to Felician. I had a speech at one of the banquets. Uh, I would come up and throw live to some of the guys um, when I was getting ready for my season. Um, you know, I always check in with him. I'm always looking at box scores and stuff throughout the years. Um, so him and I definitely have a really good relationship, and it's not something that you see too often. 
um, especially, you know, I played with guys from like University of Texas who, mm-hmm. you know, if they texted Augie Garrido back then, they weren't even sure if they got a text message back where, you know, if I called Chris for anything and I needed him for in an emergency situation, he'd be there in a heartbeat. So I'm definitely uh, grateful for that relationship. And those are the coaches that really matter the most. Mm-hmm. Ago walks on four pitches. And you've been watching this team for a while. What players have really caught your eye as far as growth from where they started? Um, you know, Gutierrez, definitely. Um, there's some new guys here. I'm still learning some names. Uh, so I actually, am I. Yeah, I actually coached Sean Downing back when he was younger. I think he was like 14 at the time. Yeah, he, um, and he's still not 100% healthy either, but he's still hitting the ball very well and playing great defense as we saw um, last inning. But did you see the home run he hit? last week I did I saw that that video and uh, he's a guy he's got some thump um, you know he's he's come a long way from from the 14 year old that I remember he now looks, looks good in a uniform too so. even being 14 having on um, the high knees uh, the high socks wearing number 99 is he trying to emulate who I'm thinking he might be a little bit but uh, for you know, those that's, that's not a bad guy to emulate for those of you trying to who don't know that's Aaron Judge for the Yankees um, but yeah Downey uh Really on uh, coming into a groove, even though still not 100%, he's still batting over 350. Yeah. But then uh, a lot of guys have been striking out for Felicia, including Curcio, but instead of striking out, they grind out to short. Um, but uh, you also heard about Curcio. It's his first year of the program, and he actually had to get brain surgery. Yeah, I just found that out today, actually. That's I found that crazy out story. last week, and yeah, absolutely nuts. And. As, as soon as I found that, I'm like, how, why did nobody tell me this? Yeah. But yeah, it was a, uh, it's 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 an absolutely uh, crazy story, and and knowing that he's still able to play baseball, uh, is absolutely incredible. Yeah, God bless him. Downey swinging a miss at dish. Now, what are your plans right now? Do you plan on trying to make a comeback uh, into the majors? I know you had Tommy John, mm-hmm. and I know that's a, a long recovery. Uh, and also, what about uh, you and Coach Lincoln trying to possibly be thinking about a coaching spot? Yeah, um, you know, I had Tommy John at a pretty bad time. I had it in 2018, um, right at the end of that season when I debuted. Um, obviously missed 19 because of rehab and then lost 2020 because of COVID. So when did you start to feel that tightness or that, that pain? Uh, man, it, it was... I had a partial tear back in 2014, actually, mm. um, but I was able to rehab it and get five years out of that ligament. Now, uh, Downey walks. And then, uh, you know, I, I'm keeping my options open. Um, I didn't want to retire, but, um, you know, I asked the Cubs for my release, and, and they were nice enough to grant it to me. So I was uh, grateful for that. Um, so the uh, – I'm definitely grateful for the opportunity to be with them. And, uh, you know, I've talked to Chris about some possibilities. Uh, I'm just keeping all my options open now, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, we, we wish you the best of luck, especially with what you've done for Felician and what you brought to Felician, especially inspiring all these young pitchers to follow in your footsteps. It's got to be, it's gotta be a, a feel-good story for you, especially. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I always try and come back and, and try to help the guys out as much as I can, um, you know. Now that you know I'm, I'm home a little bit more, I'll be able to come around and, and help out a little bit more too. 